So I will be giving advice in this video as well, but because of exactly what we're going to be talking about with how finicky Gen Z is, there is a chance that by the time I'm done with this video when it comes out, it's already going to be out of date. That's it, that's my intro. Hi, I'm Amanda, you're watching Small Entertainment, and today we are talking about how movie studios have zero idea what Gen Z wants. They don't know. They're trying to figure it out, they really cannot. It's almost impressive. Behind me is a still from the movie Babylon. This is the recent flop as far as what Gen Z wants and uh, the latest failed marketing attempt specifically to Gen Z. I'm not doing a video on Babylon. I did not hate the movie. There was a lot about the movie that I did like, but as a whole, I think it was needed a lot of work. My whole thing with Babylon is that I think the whole movie should have been shot from Manny's perspective because then the entire storyline of Nelly and everything else and the ending specifically makes a lot more sense because so many characters kind of get abandoned at certain points. There's a lot going on with Nelly that we don't get to see. We just kind of hear about secondhand and it would be a really good critique on how we really don't know these stars and these starlets because we only are shown what the media shows us or uh, what we see when they do flit in and out of our lives, when they're on screen or at events and things like that. I would have enjoyed the movie a lot more if it had just been very hard and fast of this is Manny's story and we are seeing everyone else's stories from Manny's perspective. There was a lot of sequences in this movie that I really like. However, the marketing is specifically what we are talking about. But first, let me tell you about the sponsor for today's video, AG1 from Athletic Greens. AG1 is a nutritional drink and their mission statement is actually own your health, own your day. Each scoop of AG1 has nine health products in one, giving you the benefits of a multivitamin, minerals, probiotics, and more. Recently, my lifestyle has been a little crazy, and even right now, I am currently traveling, and it's pretty hard to stay consistent with my nutrition when I'm all over the place. AG1 is a great way to make sure I'm getting my nutritional foundation, whether I'm at home in my studio apartment or in a hotel room. Personally, I found the best luck with taking AG1, not exactly first thing in the morning, but after I've taken Hermes to do his morning business before I have my morning cup of coffee. I like the convenience of AG1, but I've also found that it's really helped my digestive health because like all hot girls, I have stomach issues. Honestly, the best way I can describe the taste is like green licorice. If you tap the link in my description box and make your first order, you'll get five travel packs free of AG1 and a one year supply of immune supporting vitamin D3K2. Let's go on this health journey together. Thank you again to AG1 for sponsoring this video. If you've heard me talk about movies in general, specifically movies that underperform and all of that, I talk about how movie studios need to be utilizing TikTok because TikTok is an incredible marketing tool. However, I think that studios hear that Probably not for me, but in general. Studios hear that and they think that that means that they need to make uh, promoted ads on TikTok and that they just need to take the, the trailer, the craziest parts of the trailer and stick it on TikTok. And that's not at all what I am talking about. The movie that I talked about recently is The Invitation. Now I filmed my video on The Invitation after I watched it and that was before TikTok really got a hold of The Invitation. Now, The Invitation is a movie that's a vampire movie, kind of a, you know, what are his real intentions kind of movie. If you wanna go watch my video review of that, I had a lot of issues with it, but that's mainly because I really don't like wasted potential and that movie was entirely wasted potential in my opinion. There was a lot of things that worked and there was a lot of things that were rushed, but it's, you, it's, it could be way worse, you know, it's, it's a fun movie, it's a fun watch. If, if you are a book talk girly, book talk girlies got obsessed with it, okay? The girly pops were obsessed with it. TikTok got a hold of that movie because a couple of people went to go see it and were like, why did we not know that it was a vampire movie? This is basically, they kept saying enemies to lovers. It was not enemies to lovers. Let's make that abundantly clear. Dark romance girlies were obsessed with it though. You know, like, it's like, oh my God, he's like rich, he lives in a castle and he's trying to trick her into marrying him. Oh my God, I'm making fun of it because it sounds insane. <laughs> but I get it. I get why they liked it, okay? They were just started doing all this advertising for it. Some people did see the movie and were upset. They were like, what the hell are you talking about? That had nothing to do with what you guys were talking about. That was not what you made me think it was. Some people said it was vampires, 50 shades of gray. What? No, they have sex one time. 
That's it. God, I have a lot of issues with book talk and how they sell things based on like tropes and premises and like snippets of one line uh, or one paragraph to go viral on TikTok. I, I, I do think books are being written that way now uh, to some degree, at least on Kindle Unlimited, uh, the self-published books and all of that. I think they're being written to go viral on book talk because they know that that's what will sell them because they're it's a marketing tool. TikTok is an incredible marketing tool, but you, there's a way to do it and you, obviously the original product, the original thing, the media piece, the art form needs to be good to start with. Otherwise you're gonna have people turn against you because there have been books that I've been recommended because of one scene or whatever on TikTok and I read it and I'm like, this is honestly the worst thing I've ever read in my life. Whatever, you know, who knows what happened there. There's things that other people like that I don't like, that's fine. But still the same with book talk. A bunch of people went and saw this and were like, this is not giving what you guys said it was gonna give, which was my opinion of coming out of it. But that was even before TikTok got a hold of it. But the reason I originally did not go and see The Invitation when it first came out, I saw it, I think at the end of opening weekend or uh, a few days after opening weekend was because their advertisements pissed me off. The Invitation tried a couple of different advertisements on TikTok. They tried one where they used the text to voice feature on TikTok to do like the Siri voice and do it on TikTok. Red flags are when he drinks blood. The help keeps disappearing. Like it was doing things like that. And I hated it. It was so cringe. I hated it. It was bad. It was cheesy. I hated it. They also did another one that was fine. This was cute. This was fun. It was the two co-stars playing literally a red flag game where they would have like the text on the bottom saying like he has a bunch of servants or something like that. He lives in a castle, like things like that. And they would have to raise their flag on whether or not it was a red flag and there's banter. It's cute. That's fine. That's a cute little ad. Show us that your actors have chemistry. People love that. That's good. That's great. It's making me very nervous for the Red, Right, and Royal Blue adaptation because we every clip I've seen of them, there's no chemistry. <laughs> fake it, your actors, fake it, okay? <laughs> We've talked about this a lot of times, and I think this is becoming more common now. Gen Z and even millennials even, we don't really have movie stars. Not in the way that uh, our parents had movie stars or our grandparents, because with a uh, couple of reasons why, Partially, I think it's because of how oversaturated the film industry has become. That sounds bad, but like, if everyone's in this one series, then, you know, I'm not going to see it because of this one person. Same goes with um, just how accessible celebrities are nowadays. It used to be that to go see Tom Hanks, you had to go see a Tom Hanks movie. Now I think he's on Twitter and Instagram. Get anything from these celebrities, we'd have to read magazines to get even a hint of gossip into their real lives or a peek into their real lives or see them at premieres and movies and all that. We were given very controlled access access to these stars. And in doing that, the only way we could really see them was if we went and watched their performances. And there are still celebrities that are still incredibly private. And so the gossip mills fill in the pockets. And so that kind of leads to this like uh, pedestal like uh, quality for certain celebrities. But for the most part, my generation doesn't really care about that. We care about your talent. We care about your ability to perform well, basically. What I would say I see more often than not now is that someone will like two or three or 10 famous celebrities. And if one of these people are in a project, then they will go and see that project because they like this one particular actor. However, they don't like this actor because this actor is a big star. They like this actor because they like this actor. You know what I mean? They could be someone who only does like B-rated horror movies, you know, but they will go and see all these people because they like this one actor for a variety of reasons. It could not just be that they like their acting. It could also be that they like that they post dog pictures, you know, it could be like that they find them attractive. It could be a bunch of different things, but they're more likely to imprint on one specific celebrity or one specific star than say, oh, let's go watch the new John Cena movie. I was gonna say Jason Statham. I don't know why I said John Cena. <laughs> no offense to either of these people. Eh. We'll put a pin in that. I don't know how I feel about that actually. <laughs> there's like, oh my God, yeah, there's a new Tom Hanks movie out. You know, like, okay, are we gonna go see the new Tom Hanks movie or because is it because we like this one actor that's in the Tom Hanks movie? I think it's also because of streaming, like I said, the oversaturation of the market. There is such thing as choice fatigue and you know, you're gonna pick one, the more accessible option for a lot of people, that's what's on streaming. Florence Pugh has two movies coming out, one's in theaters, one's on 
uh, streaming, there's a likelihood that people will choose the streaming option. Now they will choose which story they probably like more, but they will probably pick between the two just by the nature of money in general and how ticket prices have gone up. Even for a, someone like me who's AMC A-list, AMC A-list recently raised their prices again. It's still worth it to me because of how many movies I have to see because of my job, but people are making those choices. We are in or are going into, I know I keep saying that, but they're not going to declare it a recession. People always talk about this. They're not going to declare it a recession until they're almost done with it until they have a game plan to get out. Because once that that's how you keep people from killing other people, you know, like you, you have a game plan. Look, we're almost done moving forward. People are making choices now that they have previously not had to make. We talked about this during the pandemic. We act like the pandemic is so far removed, but it's not, you know, people are still struggling financially because of lockdown, because of losing their jobs, because they got sick and suddenly had all these medical bills. We just lost a family member in my family. It was so fucking expensive. And I say that, and it sounds insensitive, but this is not something that we talk about in this country. We don't talk about how expensive death and illness and health costs can be. Movie theater experience is a luxury. And so, yeah, a movie like Babylon <laughs> is gonna underperform because let's talk about Babylon. Because when I went on the Mike, Mike and Oscar podcast, they were trying to understand why my generation didn't flock to this movie. And I said, it's because they advertised it entirely wrong. They did have a marketing campaign, but it seems like their marketing campaign was entirely, how can we get Gen Z to go see this movie? And they had no idea how to market to Gen Z. And so the marketing budget was basically wasted because no one went and see, saw it. Let's see, at the time of recording this, this is it, I'm recording this on uh, New Year's Eve. Uh -huh. Let's see, what's Babylon made up until now? <laughs> Domestically, Babylon has made $8.3 million. That's abysmal. I heard somewhere that the budget was 80 million. Here I'm seeing that it's 110 million. That fits more with what they had to build and the sets, party scenes, the extras. They had a bunch of actors in there. I'm sure that that's a uh, budget cost. Twitter's kind of going back and forth on whether or not it's a good movie or not. That's fine, that happens. But I wanna talk about some of the TikTok marketing that they did because my issue with Babylon is that they only advertised what they thought Gen Z would be interested in which is the crazy sequences. Most of the ads you see, even when I searched up Babylon, all of the photos that I saw on my computer for this, this is from the opening uh, sequence of the movie. This is from the party sequence, the first act of the movie. Most of the posters are from that. Most of the advertisements are from the first act of the movie. The movie is not a crazy party movie, regardless of what people's, it just isn't. There's a lot of critique on the excess of the time and the starlets and the issues of cocaine and all this stuff. There's a lot of talk about that, but the opening sequence to have that sell your movie, I think is a mistake because one, my generation always saw, already saw the great Gatsby. They already saw it. We had to read about it in school and then we saw it, you know, like it's advertising it just on the party was not a smart move. I don't know who said that that was a good idea, but it was not. The only other clip that I saw from this movie, aside from the main trailer with the party sequence, was a clip of Margot Robbie's character, Nelly on set with uh, Samara weaving. She's snapping because she's stealing the scene from under me and she's icing her nipples to make them all perky and stick out of her shirt. And then Margot's like, no, I'm not. They're just like this naturally. And then it cuts to a scene of her backstage icing her nipples. Like that's that's it. And with like the, the Babylon, go see Babylon. Why did you choose that scene? Was it because it's Margot Robbie being hot and she's icing her nipples and you thought it was funny? Why, I'm trying to understand why that was the scene that was shown to me routinely. Now I'm not saying that that's the only other scene that was shown, but I'm saying that's the only scene that I saw. And now I'm seeing a lot of people talk about how they have never heard of this movie and that that's why it flopped. The marketing budget must've been so low. No, the marketing budget was entirely for TikTok and Gen Z. That's why people who would have gone and seen this movie, cinephiles and film bros and all those people did not be shown, were not shown, did not be shown. We're not shown <laughs> advertisements for this movie because they didn't think they needed to. They thought people would just hear about it on their own because it's a Margot Robbie movie because it's Brad Pitt, because that's what they thought they would want. So there was the sequence of the party, not a good sell. The entire movie is not that. If you were selling it on this movie, one, you're lying. <laughs> because then when you look at the synopsis for the movie, it talks about how the excess of Hollywood and the, the uh, struggle of change between the silent film era into talkies. And that whole sequence, oh my God, there's this great, amazing sequence that I loved so much in this movie where it's the struggle that Margot Robbie's character, Nellie Leroy is having with doing her first soundstage 
film shoot. And it's so hard for her because her whole, the moment she's introduced to us, she's like, I'm a star. You're either born one or you ain't one. And I'm, I'm a star. I'm already a star. You don't know me yet, but I'm a star. She walks onto the silent film set and is immediately an incredible actor. She's a star. Everyone loves her. And then she's struggling with the soundstage because there's all these rules now. You can't talk too fast. You can't talk too low. You can't talk too loud. You're going to blast out the speaker. You have to step on your mark. You have to do it this way. You have to do it that way. Everyone has to be silent. Why is there a clicking sound? We have to do the take again. And it's such a good sequence. It's so good that that alone, showing us that in the trailer at all would have been amazing. That would have sold more than this movie. That whole sequence alone, give a TikToker that one sequence and let them talk about that sequence. You will get people to go see this movie. Let's talk about the other advertisements that they did on TikTok because I saw two of these and I thought both were incredibly cringe and I didn't realize they were Babylon ads until I read the caption. One of them uh, had Bryce Hall in it. I think this is also the one that had our buddy, channel buddy, uh, eyes full of judgment. That guy was in one of these ads as well. And then another one that I saw that I, I don't remember who was in it. They were advertisements with a bunch of TikTokers and it wasn't like a POV, you're, you're at a party or something like that. They literally did full film shoots, it looks like, from the producers of this movie to advertise Babylon. And it was like, look, it's TikTokers going to a party. Go see Babylon in theaters. And it was trying to capture the style of Babylon, but they're dressed modernly. I would believe more that this was a shoot for a new movie the TikTokers are doing. And not that it was an advertisement for Babylon but they're Babylon advertisements. Also, a bunch of TikTokers were invited to the premiere of Babylon, which that's not new. A bunch of tickers, TikTokers get, a bunch of tickers, a bunch of TikTokers get invited to these premieres all the time, but I've never seen it emphasized in this way where they are specifically saying, look at everyone that we brought to this movie because they think that that's what Gen Z wants. They think that we want to see these influencers at these events, which people like seeing influencers at events the same reason they like seeing celebrities that aren't in movies at the events. You know, it's like, oh, it's like a fun little Easter egg. You like this influencer and you have some form of a parasocial relationship. You're kind of excited for them that they got to go to this premiere and you also hope that they're going to talk about it. Not having the TikTokers talk about it after the premiere, that's your failing. Lift the embargoes for them. Hey, don't talk about the ending, talk about whatever you want. TikTok is an incredible marketing tool for a variety of reasons, but studios misunderstand what makes TikTok successful. Like I said, The Invitation became more popular and is now on Netflix and is one of the top 10 movie releases on Netflix partially because of book talk, because they decided, oh my gosh, this movie has X, Y, and Z. I need to talk about it because it is X, Y, and Z. But see, that's one individual TikToker, usually a mid-sized creator, talking about a movie and selling the movie. Sometimes they talk about the positives, sometimes they talk about the negatives, but even talking about something negatively, me talking about old and ripping into the movie old from M. Night Shyamalan, some of you went and were like, I don't believe her. I'm gonna go watch it. And then they're like, you were so right, I hate you. <laughs> I try to be honest with you guys about my feelings. You can disagree with my opinions, but you know, I, I don't, I'm not out here being like, here's what didn't happen in the movie. Same goes with uh, the invitation. People like hearing individuals talk about things. To some degree, you guys trust my opinions. You can disagree with them, but to some degree, you, you believe that I am telling you the truth, that I am being genuine when I talk about things with you. And so that being said, whether I talk about something positive or negatively, there is an element of trust where you believe that I am telling you the truth. Same goes with TikTokers. People like that style of movie review styles on TikTok. Quick cuts, here's what I'm talking about. Here's what I liked about it. Here's what I didn't like about it. Usually there's a little microphone. I don't know why the little microphone became popular on TikTok. I kind of hate it. If you really wanna sell your movie to Gen Z, find or have someone research 15, 20, 30 TikTokers that do film and movie reviews. Don't just invite them to the premiere. I don't think that's enough. I think if you're only focusing on premiere times, I think you're setting yourself up a little late. I think what you need to be doing instead is giving them screeners early on. And the embargo just needs to be, don't ruin the ending, talk about it however you want. Not only talk about it positively, because no one, your movie is not perfect. I hate to break it to you. If you allow 
your creator to say, Hey, can, if, if you want to talk about the downsides, go ahead, but let's keep it to two maximum, maybe like keep it at two. But if you want them to sit there and say only positive things, you better be paying them. I don't do paid reviews, but if you want someone to only be positive about your movie, you better be paying them. And a lot of reviews that I've seen from, uh, creators, they also won't do paid reviews because they want to be honest, give a bunch of creators, early screeners and say, we would like you to make one to two videos about this, but just, you know, talk about it however you want two negatives maximum per video, not in general, per video, and let them just talk about the movie. Give them maybe some high resolution footage that they can add in that's already fit for an iPhone screen or for scrolling, things like that, that'd be good. But give them early access. That needs to be part of your marketing budget before the premiere. That needs to be in there. You need to be getting people, hey, it's coming out on this day. I got an early screener, here is this. And I've seen that happen and people get excited about it. Not just for streaming movies, for movies that are gonna be in theaters. People want to trust someone who's already seen the movie. For some reason, I don't know exactly why this is, but a lot of people don't put stock in professional critics anymore. I kind of can go both ways on it. There are some times where I'm like, oh, okay, this got me excited about a movie, or I think this person's lying. You know, I don't think that they, I think there's a variety of things that go into professional film reviewing, and I don't claim to be a professional film reviewer. I'm just an asshole with an opinion on the internet. I'm here to be annoying. But you guys like that because I'm telling you my real thoughts and I'm not beholden to anyone. I'm not trying to get invited to the, these premieres. I don't need to go to these premieres. I will talk about this movie as I pay for my ticket to go and see it. Same goes with a lot of these TikTokers and content creators. That's why people trust them. TikTok is also an interesting gambit because obviously for my channel, when I'm negative about a movie, you guys like it more. You guys like when I'm ripping something apart. I have made positive movie reviews. I have talked about how much I've loved movies before. Those videos never perform the same. They just never do. Usually I talk about movies when I have something to say and the reality of it is, is that I have way more to say when I want to rip something apart. On TikTok, it's different. People want to hear about a movie, positive or negative. Same goes with the clips being released. Like I said, if you guys, for Babylon specifically, if you had released the scene with Manny and Nelly in the car, unedited, uncut, no extra music added, just released that scene, that would have done very well on TikTok. That would have gotten more people to go and see it because they want quality stories. They want quality acting. To sell it based on the party scene is one a disservice to your movie, but also a disservice to the intelligence of Gen Z. <laughs> they want fast moving lights and sounds. That's all they care about. Their attention is so short. I mean, yeah, but also no. The movie, what was it? Pray for the devil went the invitation route. When she's a girl boss exorcist. I hate you. I genuinely, can't stand you. Girl boss is a joke meme term now. It's almost exclusively used derogatorily <laughs> or as a bit, like just a girl boss building her empire. She girl bossed a little too close to the sun. It's not like a turn of endearment anymore, if it ever really was, you know? That was like a weird pocket of capitalism <laughs> that we don't talk about. <laughs> so to use that for a marketing tool as like a way to get Gen Z in the pocket, like it's, you know, you'd rather edit, edit it as a good for her movie than anything. Like two minutes of the soundstage scene would have been so good. Uh, the scene with Nelly and Manny in the car monologue that Jean's smart as Eleanor St. John, her monologue that she gives to Jack, that alone, I know it, it spoils quite a bit, but whole movies are watched on TikTok. The movie Fall People watch that entire movie on TikTok and that's an issue with copyright. That monologue scene is such a good scene. I'm still thinking about that monologue because it's so good. People like seeing quality acting. People like seeing quality storytelling. And I think one, it's a disservice to your movie but also to your audience to dumb it down to just this crazy party sequence that just reels you in. It sets the tone for the movie, but to minimize the movie to that, I think is a disservice to your film. Same goes with TikTok. Gen Z is smart. I hate to break it to you guys. I know you think that you just need to pander to them because their attention span is zero. Also my nemeses, the Russo brothers, they are my one-sided nemeses. They uh, are doing the live action Hercules movie. And they said it's gonna be shot like it's TikTok. And I tweeted out, um, does that, what are they going to do? 20 second segments of songs instead of full songs. And someone else said, don't you dare give them ideas. And now I'm worried that that's going to be the movie. Like what? 
I'm scared. Let me leave you on this note. Hire Gen Z to market your movies to Gen Z. Gen Z does not like being talked at. They don't like being told what to like and what not to like. Cause they'll just prove to you that they don't like that or that they will stop liking that to prove a point. Did you see Babylon? Did you see The Invitation? Did you see Pray for the Devil? What's a movie advertisement that you've seen on TikTok that you hated? Uh, who's a uh, TikToker or YouTuber film review uh, channel that you like? Uh, comment them down below. Just use their names. Don't use links. Links are blocked because of uh, scammers. Put their names in there. I like promoting other creators when I can. Reminder, I have a podcast, The Swell Shans Podcast, new episodes coming soon. Reminder, I have merch like this mug here and uh, new design will be coming out for this video as well for a limited run on fourth wall. Shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for supporting my Patreon. If you'd also like to follow my Patreon, I'll be down below. I'd like to follow me on other social media. That'll be all up here. And that's going to be it. Have all the day. Goodbye. Also, this movie did not need to be three hours long. No movie needs to be three hours long, but especially not this movie. It was entirely Brad Pitt being told that he didn't have to worry about pacing anymore. And he just took 600 years to say every single one of his lines. Anyways, that's it. Goodbye. Thank you, Alan, Cameron, Christopher, Chris, Chris P, Crash PC, China, Dirty One, Don, Elliot, Evan, Eric, Eyal, Hopeless Incognito, Isaiah, Jack Ray, James, Joe, John M, Jordan, Joseph, Kenny, Kim, Kristen, Lamb, Lexis, Luis, Matt, Matt, O, Matthew S, Meme Lord, Michael, Michael, J, Micah, Nathan, Nathaniel, Pat, Penn, Richard, Rob, Red, Robert, Ross, Sam, Serena, Ryan, Sierra, Skylar, Simon, Tasha, Timothy, Heavenly, Plastic, Tom, Cordy, Randy, Winter, Wendry, Winley, Zendry, Zwink.